So, as you know, the, the new year, it's upon us, right? There's no escaping it, right? It's 2023. And a lot of people get excited about it. Um, I, th- I would say most of us probably do. We look at the new year as a fresh start on life. And somehow we feel that this coming year, it should be a whole lot better than the last one. At least we hope so. We're, hope, we're leaving the past behind, and we're looking ahead to a brighter future. We feel that maybe we've possibly failed at dieting over the past year or so. This year we'll succeed in losing that 10, 20 pounds, maybe, if, you're, if that's in your head. Me, I, I would like to lose a few. Uh, we feel that we didn't maybe possibly get that promotion at work that maybe we didn't impress the, the boss as much or enough, but this year we'll do a whole lot better at our job. In our spiritual life, we might feel as though we failed in setting aside time to read God's word and pray. But we're certain we're going to succeed this year with that, right? Now, New Year's is a time of new beginnings, and we all get excited about new things. A great many of us see this new year as a new start on life and as a, and as a joyous thing. However, this morning, I want to speak to you about another kind of new beginning and another kind of fresh start. I want to talk to you about something that's a whole lot more exciting than a new year. I want to speak to you about receiving a brand new life. More specifically, I want to talk to you about receiving a brand new spiritual life as a child of God. Now, we get really excited when we think about gaining a fresh start on life, but what if I told you that you could do something greater than just improve your physical life? What if I told you that you could be transformed into a new creation? That would be exciting news, right? Amen, right? A new creation? That'd be really cool. Well, the Bible tells us that we can indeed become a new creation. And I want to share that awesome news with you right now. So let's take a look at our scripture this morning. It's in your bulletin. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 21. Therefore... If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, And has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So verse 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So in verse 17, we see a wonderful promise made. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. So we see here that if we're in Christ, we will receive newness of life. But what does it mean to be in Christ? If you are in Christ, then you're a Christian. The word Christian, though, is not a title for certain belief system that you possibly held since you were a child. And it's not a word that seems someone that means someone who goes to church once a week. It's someone who tries to live his or her life as though he or she was an, actually an extension of Christ himself. The word Christian means little Christ, and it denotes oneness with Christ Jesus. It is someone who lives his entire life for Jesus. 
Go back to verse, we're going to go back to verse 15. It's not in your bulletin, but it says, He died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Therefore, if you call yourself a Christian, then remember that you're someone who's supposed to be living your entire life for Jesus and not for yourself. Now, how is this done? How's this done? Now, according to Romans 6, 3 through 5, being in Christ is becoming as one with Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. It's doing as the Apostle Paul said in Galatians 2.20 when he declared, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. A Christian is a person who has crucified his flesh or his sinful nature, or rather he has put it aside in order to be raised or resurrected into newness of life with Christ Jesus. Now, the way that we crucify the sinful nature is to admit to God that we're living in sin. For Romans 3.23 says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We must then ask forgiveness for our sins and admit that we believe that Jesus Christ paid the penalty for our sins when he died on the cross. We must also believe that Jesus rose from the grave in order to conquer the sin and death that has been reigning in our life. If we do these things, according to Romans 10, 9, we will be saved. When we're saved, it means that we've been rescued from the death of sin. If we will confess our sin, then according to Job Job 33, 25 through 26, our flesh shall be like, shall be young like a child's and we shall return to the days of our youth. If we'll just allow Christ to forgive us of our sins and then start living our life for him, then we'll be transformed into a new creation in a spiritual sense. Now, Jesus told Nicodemus that he must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. And then he said to him, that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Jesus was revealing to Nicodemus that this new birth is to be found in the spiritual sense. When we identify ourselves with with Jesus and become in Christ, Then we spiritually become a new creation. Therefore, those who are in Christ or those who have accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior are spiritually made anew and reborn. This means that when someone has decided to dedicate their life to Jesus, then Jesus begins a new act of creation in their life. They are not merely reformed or rehabilitated. No, they are recreated, right? That they become a brand new person from within and they begin a brand new life. A new Christian is recreated in a similar manner as a caterpillar is recreated into a beautiful butterfly. They undergo a spiritual metamorphosis, so to speak. Now let's think about the caterpillar for a moment. A caterpillar is a prickly, lazy bug working hard to go absolutely nowhere. Little boys try to squash them with their sneakers, and girls will sometimes run away screaming when they see one. However, something very amazing happens that becomes a picture of God's grace. In what is known as as, as the chrysalis period, A thick film covers the caterpillar and a chemical reaction changes the very makeup of the creature. And very soon a butterfly can be seen within which eventually emerges and spreads its wings and begins to kick off its old life and begin its new one. This life cycle is known as metamorphosis and Christians undergo a similar change. Once we were 
useless caterpillars. But in an instant, the Holy Spirit comes into the cocoon of our hearts and begins a spiritual metamorphosis. And the result is a beautiful work of God that can fly to new heights and have limitless potential in changing its surroundings. When we're made into a new creation, we receive a new destiny. Back in verse 15, Paul said that we should no longer live for ourselves. Do you ever stop to realize that a caterpillar is, no, is of no help to those around it? It doesn't eat other pests. It only drinks sap from trees and plants, and it lives a self-centered life. God can take that flawed life and make it into something useful and meaningful. And he can give us purpose a purpose in living for him. We are also able to overcome the obstacles of life much easier when we become a new creation in Christ. When a caterpillar encounters a large boulder in the road, it will either turn around or walk around it. But in its new life as a butterfly, he looks at the boulder or the rock as a nice landing pad to get a better view of where he wants to go next in life. And he can fly now over and beyond his old obstacles. God wants you to fly from yesterday's failures and tomorrow's fears. <clears throat> we also receive a new identity when we are transformed into a new creation in Christ. The birds that once ate the caterpillar don't even recognize the butterfly that shares the skies with them. The caterpillar takes on a new identity, a new beginning, a fresh start. Now, if you get excited when you hear about new things, then becoming a new creation in Christ ought to get your feet dancing and your hands clapping, right? It should make you really excited. At the beginning of each new year, we often become excited when we think of starting over and getting another chance to make things right from the previous year. When we accept Jesus into our hearts, not only is the previous year made right, but also our entire life is rewritten. Our slate is wiped clean. And we can begin anew. We're often excited to start a new dieting program. But wouldn't you agree that Jesus is a whole lot more exciting than dieting? I think so. I hate dieting. Yeah, I should, but I shouldn't as much as I do, but I do. <laughs> and when we make a New Year's resolution, even though we're somewhat excited about it, we also secretly dread it because we're afraid of failing, right? We're afraid that we can't accomplish what we set out to do. But when we set out to give our life to Christ, it's not up to us to remove the sin and transform ourselves. But Jesus did all the work of transforming our lives. He's the one who did the hard part when he took away our sin by dying on the cross for each of us. Becoming a new creation in Jesus is something to hope in and to look forward to. And if you've not accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, then at the end of this message, I want to encourage you to pray, to receive him into your heart and your life. Put away your former life of sin and become a new creation in Christ Jesus today. Not tomorrow. Do it today. Verse 18. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. That is, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now, verse 18 tells us that we've been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ. Isaiah 59, 2 tells us that our sin results in separation from God. However, through Christ, we are put in right standing with God. 
Ephesians 2 verse 1, Paul said that we are formerly dead in our trespasses, meaning that before we received Christ, we were dead in our sins. And remember Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages or penalty of sin is death. We were dead in our trespasses or sins, but verse 19 tells us that our Lord did not impute our trespasses to us. That word impute means to charge or to attribute. God won't charge us with the penalty of our sin if we'll accept Jesus in our hearts. This is because Jesus took the penalty of our sin, which is death, upon himself when he died on the cross for you and for me. This is something like, this is something about which we should shout for joy. News like this is much more exciting than the entrance of a new year, right? Verses 18 and 19 reemphasize verse 15, which says that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. We're reconciled to God when we receive Christ into our heart. And because we've been given this wondrous gift, we're obligated to pay it forward. Right? This is where living for Jesus actually comes into play. We live for Jesus by sharing with others the reconciliation with God that they too can find in Christ. We're to share with others how they too can be transformed into a new creation. This is our spiritual duty as Christians and responsibility as believers or new creations in Christ. For Jesus said in Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. This is the Great Commission, right? And we're commanded hereby to share the love of Christ with the entire world, the wondrous joy that we found in becoming a new creation in Christ is something that we should be excited to share with others. So go tell someone how they too can become a new creation. Verse 20, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. One of the things that some people might hope for in the new year is a new job. We might want to feel the excitement that comes from a more significant occupation, the feeling of prestige or importance. We would love to leave our mundane job and do something that has eternal impact. Now, for those who receive Jesus into your hearts, we're not only transformed into a new creation, but we're given that new job. We're given responsibility and significance as we become ambassadors for Christ. As one of Christ's new creations, we move from insignificance to significance. We're transformed and we become valuable in the eyes of God. How would you like to receive a new job this new year, a job with eternal weight? If you'll accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, then you'll become his ambassador. Now, what is an ambassador? Right? It's an authorized representative of a sovereign. He, he or she speaks not in his or her own name, but on behalf of the ruler whose deputy he or she is. Right, And he or she's whole duty and responsibility is to interpret that ruler's mind faithfully to those to whom he or she is sent. If you'll recall, each passage that we've seen this morning has been emphasizing how we're to no longer live, we are no longer live for ourselves, but for Jesus. We now live for King Jesus as his royal ambassador. 
When we're changed into a new creation and begin sharing with others how they too can receive this same transformation, then we become an ambassador for Christ. A part of our job responsibility is to implore people to be reconciled unto God. When we implore people, we urge them. We plead with them. We beg them. For that is what the word means. And this should be no problem for us because the news that we must share is the most exciting news ever given to mankind. The news that individuals can be, me- can be made right with God, become a new creation, and be given a purpose with eternal significance. Verse 21, For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. All the wonderful benefits we, we receive could not be possible if it weren't for the great sacrifice made by the Son of God. The Lord made his only Son, Jesus, to, be got, to become sin for us. Jesus bore the penalty of our sins when he died on the cross. He took on the sins of the entire world and became a sin. He temporarily became as unrighteous before God because of the sin that he bore. And he received the punishment of sin, which is death, in order that we might be the ones to be seen as righteous in the eyes of God. Jesus was deformed that we might be transformed. He became despised and rejected that we might be made anew. Remember, though, the benefits of that people receive from his sacrificial death are obtained only by believing that Jesus Christ truly died for us and by believing that he arose from the grave in order to conquer sin and death on our behalf. Romans 10, 9 and 10. If we accept his sacrifice, then we'll become the righteousness of God in Christ. As I started the beginning of this message, New Year's is seen as a time of change and a time of renewal. And if you're hoping that things will change in your life and you get easily excited about new things, then give your heart to God and you won't be able to contain your joy. I promise you that. Give your life to Jesus Christ and you'll be forgiven of your sins. Be made into a new creation. Be moved from insignificance to significance. And you'll be given a brand new and exciting job as an ambassador for Christ. A new year can't ever compare to the newness of life that we find in Jesus Christ. Will you join me in prayer this morning? Dear Heavenly and Merciful Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for another new year. May this year that is upon us Be truly new. May we give our hearts to you, Lord, on a daily basis, not just Sunday morning, but in everything we do. Help us to understand what that means to be a Christian, to be a child of God. And help us to take that forward in our daily lives. We ask this as we ask for all great things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.